We have a we have a number of books with us um, to give you since Rosary has been such a supporter of the hospice. And uh, Sister Margaret has been with the hospice the longest of any person, I think. She was at the old Calgary Hospice, uh, Calgary Hospital, and, um, and then has been with us all the way along. So please welcome Sister Margaret. Well, it brings back a lot of memories for me to be here today, because I know in the late, yeah, mid to late 70s, I've been to a Rotary function three times, once by myself, once with Alan Gray, and I think it was Alan Gray or Dr. Kittle, and once with Max Cavett in developing what we were doing at Mary Potter Hospice. I remember these occasions very well, really, because of your enthusiasm and support that um, the Rotarians have done throughout the last 35 plus years. Um, the first being a um, building, well, restructuring the old Saluce room and um, toilet block in the Calvary ground floor to make a, a, vis a family flat, which was very well used in those early days. I don't know if it was just before the hospice was opened in 79 or after, but uh, I think it was beforehand. And I remember a lady, just when we launched this book last November, it was in the newspaper, this lady rang me up saying, and she was um, just saying to me how good I was to her and her two little children when her husband was dying at the hospice. And, and she said who her name was. And I remembered Andrew very well, thank God. That was a tick for me. And I you know, explained the, uh, the cancer tumour he had on his head. And she said to me, you know, you were so really wonderful to me because she used to come down at night time into the flat and just talk to me and we'd have a couple of wines and you'd be really just settling me down and she stayed there for a few weeks until Andrew died. And my head went straight away and think, I think I was hoping I was down there to, to give her that relaxation and not having the wine. <laughs> I sort of thought, oh dear. But anyhow, so that has been very great value. I, um, and you, have, you were there on the front line when there were several other things happening because I was, um, you know, People say, well, I founded the hospice, the first hospice in New Zealand, and what a wonderful person I am. And that's not quite true. I am a wonderful person, but it's not quite true. Because, um, you know, the back in the late 70s, I did write a letter asking for, for us as a little company of Mary to specialise in caring for the sick and dying, because that's what we were founded to do as a, as a congregation in London. And uh, we had got into being privately surgical people, as most of you would know, Calvary Hospital was a surgical place. And being sort of self-centred, you know, I'm no surgical nurse. I'd much rather be a medical nurse. And during that time, Vatican II came out and wanted us to get back to our original charism. So, you know, there wasn't really any remarkable thing about that because it gave me a reason to get back to doing our charism. So that was my first, um, first commission. But I then didn't have any strategies of what I was going to do with this, this specialised unit. What, what did that mean? Um, and, you know, I just didn't have the insight to think I need this and I need this and I need these type of people. But a, a great miracle, and this book is full of little miracles all the way through. And what that miracle was, within 12 months, there was three people who came on board, four really, but three people. One was Dr. Alan Gray, who came back. He had finished all his um, cancer um, education and skills and experience. When he came back, he, um, it was Wellington Hospital, just only had two beds and, and one machine. But he, and... Before that, there was an age 64, a lady died at Wellington, at Calvary Hospital and didn't know why we couldn't have a private cobalt machine. So she donated a cobalt machine plus 12 beds plus a, a, a foundation trust. But that was a white elephant. But Alan Gray 
He wouldn't have come to our place if that machine wasn't there, but he came and we had six single rooms on the flat ground floor, which didn't actually belong to us, they were surgical. But he came, so he, he was very instrumental in getting the hospice set up. Dr Michael Shepherd was very instrumental because, again, he was an English GP who wanted to come out here to, to, um, to take on a partnership with Keith Humphreys as a GP. But he had met Dane Cecily Saunders. He knew a lot about pain management. We knew nothing very much. He, knew, he, he was the one that provided pain management. And then towards the end of the 12 months, um, Betty Fowler, who had worked in UK, I've worked in UK as a um, community hospice and she, she wanted to start that in Wellington and she didn't achieve it, she came to us. So that was really the, bone, the backbone. Now, the Rotarians was there in those, at the end of in a few years to say, well, to help us get that established. You believed in us and you supported us over those few years until we established the hospice. And you continue to support us right until 2015 in, in believing in us to get those values. And I believe those values are probably what your service organisation is all about, the same values. So I just want to thank you very much. And the book is there and it tells you we left a legacy um, <coughs> so that you know it's there. So it's a good read. And no one's in more important than anybody else in that book, which is what makes it famous. Mm -hmm. So enjoy the read and thank you.